with 16 Bars. I'm Steph. I'm sitting here with Belly in uh, at the Splash Festival, actually. Um, this, is this your first time at Splash? Yeah, it's my first time at Splash. It's exciting. I'm excited to be here. Cool, yeah. Um, for, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's fucking dope. Like, he had the dopest freestyle. I'm such a big fan of your freestyle, man. For real. It was like, I heard that shit and I was like hyped, like, when I watched it as well. It was really crazy. So props to you for that. Oh. Uh -huh. Couple immigrants with guns in their Diodoras Catch a body just a product of the diaspora yeah. Too blind to see the horror Too numb to feel the aura I need a love like Steven Laura Robin Rita Hold up okay. Violator they might kill you for it Thank you um, That was like uh, last year, right? Yeah, yeah, that was last year Yeah, LA Leakers, man Shout out to Just Incredible That's my guy Sour Milk That's my peoples Look who I ran into, bro All the way in Switzerland yeah, I saw you actually uh, met up with French. You guys met up. What was the, how did that happen and what was that like? Well, it's just cool like when you see, you know, people that you're used to seeing at home all the time and like you're halfway across the world and you just like happen to be staying in the same hotel. It was just cool, man. And that's, that's you know, that's my big brother. So every time we link up, it's, it's a vibe, you know? Will there be any, you know, music of the two of you together on the up and coming project? If you're allowed to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I got, I got something real special with him on the project. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, while, while I was stalking your Instagram, by the way, I uh, actually saw you'd posted, "You just awakened a sleeping giant." What was that about? Like, what's going on? Everybody want to rap now. It's like I put out a rap project last year when everybody was trying to do something else. And um, it comes easy to me, man. So it's just, it's fun to see everybody trying to, you know, um, go back to the bars and stuff. This is my game. This is my game. Everybody knows that, you know what I mean? So, you know, for a while I just chilled. And um, this is my motherfucking game. So now they know I'm coming. That's it. Y'all want to rap? Let's rap. <laughs> Um, I kind of think they already knew it's your game after the fucking freestyle. Uh, okay, if I can be honest, I think everybody kind of... That was, that that's, I promise you, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's just the surface. You know, it's like, it's so much, it's so much shit I got to say and so much shit I got to touch on. And, you know, it's, it's like, this album, this album's going to be therapeutic for me just, just because of the amount of shit I'm going to get to talk about. People want bars again. It's what they want. This is what I do, you know, so it's a, it's, it's a perfect time. Yeah, about your, your new up and coming album, um, I believe the name is Midnight Zone, correct? And um, I'd seen an interview where you just talked about that you were in like a very dark place and shit and going through it. And that's why you called it Midlight, Midnight Zone. And um, what, what was going on? Like what was going on in your life that just kind of put you out in a spiral, if I may ask? I mean, I think, um, you know, Sometimes life has a way of like just breaking your heart, man. Like, you know, yeah. And it's like, I think everybody goes through the same shit. It's just about how we react to it, you know what I mean? And I was like, so focused on the bad shit that was going on with me that by the time I was over it, some other bad shit would happen to me. So it was like, I just kind of learned to let shit go really fast and then enjoy the in between times. Because we all gonna go through some shit, so. I just try to get over shit fast enough. That's it. But what helped you like get through it? Um, what was like therapeutic, th therapeutic for you to like work, work out whatever was going on? I think expressing it and like being able to talk about it through the music and stuff was like a good way to get the weight off my shoulders, you know. And and, and that, I think that's why my fans relate because when they listen to the music, it's like it's brutally honest, you know what I mean? And it's it's uh, the only time I'm ever vulnerable. It's the only time I ever open up you know, is, is in my music, so it's really my only form of therapy sometimes, you know? Yeah, I get that. But have you ever considered, like, trying real therapy to, like, work shit through? Because that's a big trend right now, I feel. Like, everybody nah. has a therapist suddenly. I mean, I don't knock you if you're doing it. God bless you, you know, but um, I just wake up and try to make myself better every day. And I think as long as I do that, you know, I'm my own therapist, you know? What's the routine? Like, what do you do? You write stuff down to like that you want to do in the day, or what? What, is, what keeps you going? And what can you tell people that are going through shit right now? Like, how to deal with it as well? First of all, like nobody's perfect. You know, you gotta realize that. Um, and once you realize that, you'll know what the fuck to fix. You know, people are like too high on themselves. They think they got everything figured out. You don't. You know, you wake up tomorrow and you might think of um, 
an area, like an era of five years before that you thought some way, and you'd be like, man, I was stupid to think like that. But in that moment, five years before, you thought you were a fucking genius. You know what I mean? So we grow, we grow. Like, that's what life is about. You grow every day, and and uh, that's what I do now. Like I really assess myself, and I just I, I just look at what. I can make better every single day, whether it's musically, whether it's in my personal life, whatever. I just look at my life and assess it, and I say, all right, what can I, what can I do tomorrow to make this better? Like when I wake up, what could I do? And it's been working, you know. Wow. Yeah, I actually seen that um, you lost like a ton of weight and stuff. Um, okay, you said for like so you could wear designer clothes for people, and he was like, no, this is not for a health thing, not a fitness thing. It's like so it fitted my designer clothes and shit, which I found very honest and very funny. But would you consider that was one of your personal imperfections for you? Yeah, I think um, I think I think the physical changed when the mental changed. You know, I think like the fit, like the like me losing weight and all that was just a manifestation of what was happening in my mind. You know, I was I was like, my mind was in better shape, so my body just followed suit. You know, and I think that's that's really what happened. Like, um, like I, I always touch on mental health and stuff like that in my music, and I let people know that it's like you know we all go through this shit. You know, so um, you know for me to be like a living example of that, you know, it's like. You know, it makes me proud, and I think you know getting this right is what started to get this right for me. You know. Yeah, um, I think the question we were all asking ourselves earlier was um, so most of you can't see this, but he he actually has a broken leg, <laughs> or kind of broken. Something's up with your leg. So first of all, what the hell happened, and uh, how are you going to perform? Are you coming like in a golden wheelchair, or what's going to happen? Nah, shout out to Two Chains. That yeah. was genius, though. That was genius. Um, no, I was. <clears throat> I just moved into a new house, so. Um, you know, just moving around the house and stuff like that, and there's stuff everywhere. I banged my foot on something, and um, I, I, like I thought I was just like a stubbed toe, like normal, you know. And then uh, I walked around on it for like a week, and it was like hurting more a week later. So I was like, "Yo, this some something is wrong." So I went to the doctor, and they told me I got two broken bones in the same toe. Um, no, sorry, the same the same bone is broken twice in the same in my big toe. So. Uh, I just been like icing it and wrapping it. I'm still doing my shows, like still traveling and shit. Okay, but do you like cal calm down on stage? Then you just kind of limp around a little or take breaks more. Depends. Yeah, you know, if they give me the energy, like the adrenaline takes over and I just go crazy. And when I get off stage, I'm like, damn, I shouldn't have did that, you know. <laughs> but you know, it just depends. It depends how high the energy is. When the energy is high, I go crazy. It don't matter. I can have a broken back. I'm gonna be doing backflips. I don't care. You know, like whatever energy they give me is the energy I'm always return. You know. You just said uh, you just recently moved. You just said that. Um, so where did you move to? Are you are you still in the states, or where did you get a new place in Canada? Or no, I'm in California still. California, yeah. Um, I'm in LA, man. I think uh, it's like such an inspirational city for me. A lot of the best music I make is in LA, so I just stick around. Um, is, is, does your mom stay in LA as well, or is she still in Canada? No, no, she's overseas. She's actually in Jordan. She's in Jordan, yeah. My mom like runs an initiative um, on um, women's financial empowerment in the Middle East. So she like, uh, you know, that's like her life goal. That's like her whole, that's not her life goal, that's her life, you know, and she's like a superhero, you know what I mean? That's what my mom does. Yeah, I saw you uh, posted a really cute pic of the two of you on Instagram, and it's like, of course, for women everywhere, it's like, oh, heart is melting. What a sweet guy. You know, we, we love men that love their moms, obviously. Um, no, but I, I was like, and I was just thinking, well, how did she feel about your career choice? Like, did she, was she like, oh my God, you're not going to become a rapper? Or did she even believe you get to where you are? Or was this even your goal in the beginning? Yeah, I mean, she was very supportive from the, from the very jump, you know? She didn't like the fact that I moved out of 15, you know, that was the, probably the only thing that she used to like be really mad about. And I think uh, after everything, you know, God bless, like when, when uh, I started to see some of my dreams come to life and stuff like that, it's like now, now that's one of the stories she tells, you know, she's like, oh, I was so mad at him for moving out when he was 15, but he really never came back. He really never came back to the house to live. Like I would obviously go back and visit and see my mom and stuff, but. I never went back there to, and, and like needed that roof again, you know, and she like, that's something that makes her proud now, you know, and she tells that, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like a story that's like, you know, that's like, that's a, a proud moment for her, <clears throat> yeah.
Well, um, what, can I ask, why did you move out with 15? I'm just a free spirit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't have rules. I hate rules, you know. And uh, Being from a Middle Eastern family, being Palestinian, you know. Uh, you know, my pops was like kind of old-fashioned and not old-fashioned at the same time. It was weird, you know, but I had a great upbringing and I was raised great, but I just knew I, I just had to move around and I had to see the world. And, I, you know, I think staying under like my parents' rules would have never let me do that. You know what I mean? So I just got out and just went out on my own, you know? Yeah, but okay, so on some real shit, 15 is super early though, I'm not gonna lie. That's like, that's like, like you're still a fucking teenager and you're, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, I was blessed, man. I was blessed to have great friends. Uh, as a matter of fact, my manager, Sal, is like, when I moved out of 15, that's whose couch I was sleeping on. He's still my manager, you know? So uh, it was meant to be, I guess, you know? Yeah, I'm sure about that. I'm actually impressed um, because your mom is doing all this, I call it political work for the women empowerment. And I saw that you're very active as well. Like I saw your immigrant t-shirts and the posts you made. And um, for the people in Germany, can you just kind of explain the current state and what the issue is and you know how you feel about it? I think that would be super to just spread it. Um, I, think, I think compassion, you know, like human beings, um, the first thing we know is love, you know what I mean? And, and uh, I think we just need to stick to that. We need, we need to be compassionate, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, refugees or immigrants or, you know, migrants or whatever title you want to put on it, you know, uh, oh, they're coming here to steal opportunities, for example, or, or they're going, you got to understand a lot of these people come from beautiful places and they have beautiful lives where they were architects and engineers and they were scientists and doctors and they didn't want to leave, you know, and, um, you know, I think a lot of people's misconception is like, oh, they're just they lived in like uh, the slums and now they want to come here and just take the opportunity. No, you're talking about people that were forced from their homes and have nowhere to go, you know? And uh, when, when, when you can put your kids through three months of, you know, walking and traveling and going through mountains and forests and all that, you're not doing that out of nothing. You're doing that because you know you can't go back to the place that they just forced you from, you know? So there has to be other humans out there that are going to be compassionate enough to be like, you know, we got you. We're, we're, we're all humans. You know, all these lines, all these borders, somebody drew those lines. You know? Somebody drew those. Before that, hey, we were just we we're just us, <laughs> you know? And and I think like that's what we need to remember and that's what that's what we need to go back to is compassion and love and just understanding that we need each other every now and then. You know? And right now, the people that are needed, right, they might be up. But there might be a day where they're down and they need somebody. You know what I mean? And, 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 and they're going to want that energy to be reciprocated. Believe me, you know? So uh, being somebody that came to, to Canada as an immigrant and, uh, you know, and, and, and really had to learn everything from scratch, you know, learn, learn a language from, from scratch. It feels stupid because I didn't know how to speak to nobody, you know, even though I knew I was, you know, it's, 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 it's like... It's the hardest thing, and a lot of people don't understand that. And um, you know, a lot of great things come from come from people moving around and, and, and us accepting people in and learning new things about cultures. A lot of great things come from that. So I just try to highlight those things, you know. And hopefully, people could be a little more understanding. Yeah, I mean, I was I was actually very impressed with the fact that you you are um, in German. You'd call it engagement. You're so engaged in getting you know the you know showing that you you are pro-immigrants, you are pro, like anti-racism in general and stuff. Um, but I was also very impressed at the fact that, and supposedly uh, you refused to go on Kimmel because Trump was going to be there or something. Yeah. yeah, what was that about? Like, did you guys discuss, did you discuss that before with the weekend and you were like, no, we can't do this shit? Or did, what was the conversation like to just make that decision? Uh, he just supported, he just supported my decision. That was really it. Like, um, when I found out it was, we were supposed to be the only like the two build guests of the night. So when they put out the flyer, it was like Trump on top and it was like with musical guest belly. I was like, oh shit, no, like, I don't even like the way this looks, you know? Like I'm not celebrating this man's presidency. This, this, it looks like I'm the guy, you know, like that's how it felt to me, you know? And I don't know if that's what it was supposed to be or whatever, but uh, I just, I don't know, I, c I couldn't be that person. I couldn't, I couldn't support that or celebrate it. You know what I mean? So I just backed out. You know, I'd do it a hundred times over. Like, it was like the easiest decision I ever made. 
I think I think it would be harder for me to pick if I want to wear white or black socks in the morning. <laughs> Serious. Then it, then it was to make that decision, you know. I don't know. It was easy, yeah. Um, okay, so there's actually two things I still wanted to talk about um, that I thought were very intense and very interesting to me. Um, number one, also on, on the cruise show, because uh, there's been a lot of releases currently, like a lot, a lot of releases. I feel like 2018 is like the year for music, um, including yours coming soon, hopefully, as well. Um, and at the time, you said you had been a fan of Kanye, but you needed to hear the music to see like if you're still you know feeling it how do you feel about that now i haven't heard the music oh wow you just haven't had the time or just not interested when i when i make albums i don't listen to nobody else so once i'm done once i'm officially done my album then i'll start listening to music again but um you know i i, I like my shit to sound completely like me like my heartbeat my vibe you know and as human beings, we're gonna listen to shit and be inspired, even subconsciously yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes. And you know, yeah, and um, you know, he was always someone that inspired me when I was young. So that's definitely not, you know, like the road I want to go down when I'm making music. I want to make this like my thing, and then I'll go back to listening to everything else. You know? Yeah, I get that because I know I know what you mean. Like you, you might listen to certain songs and sounds, and you're like, oh, that's dope or that's terrible, and then it has an influence. So how long have you not been listening to projects coming out then? <laughs> Probably the whole year. Yeah, the whole year. Like I hear stuff that's like on the radio, or if I go to the club, or if like I'm at like you know one of my homies' house and they play something, you know I hear it. But I take music in differently. Like I put an album on and sit there and like dissect it and study it and shit. And when I'm working on my own music, I won't do that, you know. So it's, it's probably been like all year since I really took in an album. Wow, that's a serious. But that that's taking shit serious to the like the next level. That's actually very impressive, and it makes sense. I understand that. Um, I'd actually seen a, a post on your page um, for uh, XXX Tentacion, um, a conversation you guys had had. Actually, yesterday I talked to Bad Baby. Funny enough, that we talked about um, teenagers, 15-year-olds, you know, leaving the house and just being free-spirited. She's definitely free-spirited. Um, and, uh, and she got super emotional, she actually cried. I think they were very close. And like, what was your relationship to him like? And um, what made you post that, uh, those messages? I, mean, I just thought it was really like, again, it was like compassion, you know, it was like some real human shit, some real, somebody being concerned and worried about me, you know, and at that time we didn't know each other. We had never even spoken on the phone. And he just DM'd me out of nowhere and was like, yo, I hope you're all right. Like, I was like, just really like, it was really big of his spirit to do that, you know what I mean? And after that, we exchanged information. And, you know, every time I'd go to Florida and stuff like that, like, we'd always be on FaceTime and whatever, you know what I mean? So, like, um, man, he was a good kid, man. And, and you know, you know, I, I said, like, fuck everybody talking about, you know, the, 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 the negatives. You know, people can want to want to highlight negatives. Like, you know, you're talking about a, a child, you know, that, that didn't have a chance to grow into what he was fully supposed to become and in a short amount of time that he had um, he became an icon so nobody can you know take that away I don't think no one can never take that away from him you know? yeah, I agree it was way too soon doesn't matter what the stories were or whatever happened or didn't happen or whatever all negative shit greats. you gotta look at all of our greats everybody we look up to and are inspired by if they were like shining examples from the moment they were born, they would never be people we, look, we looked at like that. We look at people like that because they grew through something. They came through the fire. You know what I mean? And, you know, everybody saw him turning his life around and, and, and doing better shit and being positive and, and, and all that. Everybody saw that. So, you know, I think, you know, I, I'd rather just focus on the fact that a young man, you know, tragically lost his life. A young, talented kid, extremely talented kid that could do damn near anything musically lost his life way too soon and it's a tragedy man that's you know that's 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 what i look at um well this is kind of tough now because you said you haven't been listening to any music um but there's actually maybe you've heard this track on the radio uh it was a talk up from drake and there was jay-z on it and there was a well some would con consider it a very controversial line um have you heard the song or no i heard it on the radio um so the line was I got your president tweeting. I won't even meet, it, meet with him, so same as you, obviously. Y'all killed X and let Zimmerman live. She, sheesh, or whatever, streets is done. 
So this, I don't know, people have been really like split up about the line. What do you think about it? That's Hove. Everybody shut up and listen when Hove speaks. That's all I gotta say. That's Jay-Z. Jay-Z says something, understand, you need to shut the fuck up and listen. That's it. When Jay-Z speaks, you need to fucking shut up and listen. I think that's, that's, a, that's a good good line we can put up in here. Um, hey, <laughs> talking about Jay-Z, I mean, since you've been so focused on your album, your own album, um, did you have any, any work in Everything Is Love? Were you in there and creatively in any way? Um, no, no, no. I mean, I heard, I heard uh, you know, a couple little snippets just like hanging out with him and stuff like that, but, you know, I thought it was really dope, though. You know, I thought it was a, like a really like, it was cool hearing him and his wife go back and forth like that. Like, I think that's like, that's goals, you know? That's, yeah, that's couple goals. Yeah, it's like, you know, especially when you rap, that's like, you know, that's like the epitome. That's the epitome of, of, uh, of what a career should look like, I think, you know? And a partner, I feel like. Do you, do you have a significant other currently? Do you have a Beyonce in your life? Um, or do you not want to speak on that? No, I think um, I think for me, it's not. I don't like to speak on it. It's just um, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't like to let the world into something. You know, I do got somebody, but I just don't like to let the world into something that. Yeah, it's for us, man. I don't even really. You know, when I be places, I don't pull my camera out like everybody else. You know, and I think that's why the universe lets me go back because. I don't take pictures. You take pictures, then all you got is the picture, you know? When you got the memories, you're gonna go back there and you're gonna see it again and the pictures don't matter because it's gonna look better the next time you see it and it'll be more beautiful. The sunset will have more colors, and, you know? You gotta live for the next day. Everybody's just so focused on this, you know? Let me just put everything in my phone and in my, you know? Not me, so I'd rather just keep that. That's, that's the sacred energy. You know what I mean? It's, it's sacred, so I, I can't, I'd rather keep it sacred. I respect that. And I, and I feel like we had a really nice, deep conversation, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Honestly, I, I had a really shitty day, so, you know. Wait, elaborate on that, because I've been having shitty days. No, for real, no, please, tell me. What happened? No, it was, just, it was just crazy. It was just like one of those days, you know, like you get to the airport, shit is just crazy. I'm, yeah, man, like I got like a boot from my broken toe on. I'm, I just went through it, man. It was just a long day. I didn't have no weed when I landed. I had to go and, you know, pull some sketchy shit and pull up in some sketchy neighborhoods to get some weed out here. And shipping wild, man. Shipping. <laughs> but I feel good now. You know, I had a good combo. Yeah, got some weight off my shoulders. So thank you. I appreciate it. That was really nice. Okay, I'm gonna do an outro and then. Okay, so that was 16 Bars. I'm Steph, here with Belly, and he's going to be performing soon with a broken leg, which is just fucking mind-boggling to me, but yeah. And um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Do you have something to say to Germany? Yo, honestly, words? look, look, even though the day has been crazy, I know the night is going to be amazing. I love Germany, and I love the fact I'm out here. And thank you for an amazing conversation. <laughs>